So we are here in the Walserstollen area at Hagerbach Test Gallery, where an industry consortium under the lead of Scout works on innovative concept of underground green farming. Today I'm here with Michael Lero, one of the industry partners representing Andritz Feed and Biofuel. So Michael, underground and agriculture, how does that fit together? It starts with the challenges that we have globally. Um, think of the uh, arable land that gets more and more scarce because of urbanization, because of land erosion, uh, rainfalls. Think of the availability of resources because of the climatic change, because of drought. Um, we have not a consistent flow of raw materials. And then think of logistics, the huge impact of CO2 emission because we transport salads here to a factory and then on our plate. And then last but not least, we need to think of the availability, the affordability of safe food for the entire population on this globe. But how do you want to improve logistics, for instance? Think of uh, such an installation like this aquaponic system underneath a city, maybe even underneath a restaurant. With that, you can tremendously cut logistics uh, from the production side to your food plate, so to say. So tell us maybe a little bit more about the application that is, that is actually tested here at Hagerbach. Well, the aquaponic system basically is a closed loop with two components. On the one side, fish, where the excrements of the fish is transformed into nutrients for the vegetables, like salad in this case, and where the water is being filtered and flown back to the fish tank, providing a safe environment for the fish. Of course, in the underground space, we do not have natural sunlight. That's why we have these special lamps here. They provide artificial light, but in the right spectrum of the sunlight, optimizing the growth of the vegetables. So maybe can we touch briefly about the results and the findings of phase one, which was completed end of 2019. And that was after 10 months of intensive testing with this aquaponic uh, system. The big benefits that we saw, or the good results, was definitely on the fish. They developed quite well, and we can say growing fish on the ground is a controllable, easy process. Where we saw some challenges was on the vegetable, where we never managed to reach a satisfactory level and a stable process. So that's why it was decided in phase two, specifically looking into the growth of vegetables, right? Exactly. We had to make two basic changes. First, on the type of vegetable and the soil uh, where we are growing vegetables, and on the other side, on the technical uh, side of the setup. We had on the one side to change the irrigation system because of the change of soil, and as you already elaborated on the artificial light, in order to make it adjustable to the stage of growth of the vegetables. So the consortium is composed of an international team. How does the collaboration work with international partners not being on site or even in Switzerland? We did that through a smart monitoring system. And with that, we uh, provided access for the international team to, at any stage, keep control of what we're doing here. But it has also a second effect, by the way. Uh, with this monitoring system, we're already testing the first stage of the scale up of, to uh, achieve an industrial level of production of vegetable and fish. So thinking about industrial food production, what is the next phase? What is the next step you want to do? Well, ultimately what we're doing today is have a strong focus on the vegetable to bring them to a uh, satisfactory and uh, stable level. And we will then merge those two components again, fish and vegetable together, where we have two uh, main objectives. Number one, uh, create a stable process, a stable aquaponic process. And secondly, uh, to test whether the system as we see it here can be increased to an industrial level, thinking of 10, 20, 100 times the size that we see here. But I'm pretty sure there has been some other crazy ideas 
come into this discussion, right? Absolutely. I mean, when you look at uh, this prototype here, ideas just spark like that. And uh, just to give you a little bit of a flavor, what we're speaking here is think of feeding of the fish, which is still part of an aquaponic system. How about we use biomass as a feeding source for fish? Uh, for example, insects that could be easily grown in underground space. Think of um, a new recycling uh, process with respect to vegetables that could form, again, a new basis for feeding fish or being used as fertilizer in the process here. And last but not least, uh, scaling in up to an industrial level where we can implement other systems that we find typically in underground space. Think, for example, uh, underground data center where a lot of heat, energy is available that could be used here in such an application. So there are lots of ideas that still could be implemented. I think it's a great uh, example of how to link different applications for the use of underground space and how to, to benefit from each other. Let's talk about achievements and the response of the media, but also from public to this project. I think when we started, we had the feeling this is crazy. But when we got the response from our national uh, TV channel and also international TV channels, uh, we were just surprised, really surprised how much attention uh, was given to this project here, which is just a prototype. And I think what was recognized was this innovative approach, which eventually also got some prize, isn't it? That's the case. So we were very honored to receive the ITA Award 2019 in the category of Innovative Underground Space Concept of the Year for Underground Green Farming. Thank you, Michael, for joining me today. Thank you, Klaus.